have Dr. Mary Jane Burge, Dr. Deb Knazer, and Dr. Christy Wright. Why did I lost my presentation? And I didn't do anything to it. <laughs> uh, first of all, um, Mike, I think you're our only participant at the moment. So I would like you to introduce yourself and tell us uh, your role in this. Okay, my role is as a uh, grandparent and it's kind of a unique situation in which uh, we have uh, a grandson by our son, uh, and he is, as mentioned earlier, 10 years old. He's in fifth grade. He goes to um, North Lakeland Elementary School down in Manitouish Waters, uh, close to Manaqua. And he's part-time with his dad and part-time with his mom. And just as we entered into the coronavirus lockdown, just prior to that, uh, he had been with us and had been keeping up his grades and things like that. And um, then went back to his mom. So he kind of shared time there. So he's been back with his mom through now this process of the lockdown and um, hopefully keeping up with everything. But uh, we expect to see him this weekend and whether he'll stay through till the end of the school semester, we're not sure, but we may have some catching up to do. The nice little boy um, and our daughter uh, we have a daughter. She lives in Superior, is married, and has two children that are twins that are five years old. And I'm a retired teacher myself, as well as my wife. My wife taught for 25 plus years as a preschool teacher, and I taught as a, a hospitality management and then a, a small business instructor, marketing, etc., at WITC and collectively for 40 years. So wow. we've had experience uh, working just only in the classroom. And when I started teaching in the classroom down in Ohio, uh, I had no education degree, but I had a hotel restaurant management degree and then got a job in Wisconsin. They said, you need some credentialing. So how am I going to do it? So I enrolled at UW-Stout in a grad program. I did have a bachelor's degree. And while at Stout, um, I found out during the school year, nights I could drive back and forth with another fellow that was working on education courses at UW-Superior. So we'd travel back and forth, sometimes two nights or three nights a week for, golly, three years, four years at least. So I could at least pick up a master's degree, an edu education specialist degree. So I do have some education background myself as well as my wife to help with our kids. and. Our grandkids are doing just great with their mom and dad that are working from home. And um, I was glad that this uh, offering was available and certainly the right price. I just feel bad there weren't more people that were able to pick up on it. And maybe it was just the uh, timing that um, it was kind of like water over the dam already for some, some families, I yeah, think. Yeah, I, I think that's there. true. Um, welcome. Mike, I think that's true, but I also think that there's been a lot more people registered and then they're being sent the uh, presentation. So I feel like we are sharing it with more people than what's exactly here at the moment. Great. Which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. it is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, in this, we're going to kind of answer two parts. Uh, what can I do to stay connected to my grandchildren? And how can I help their parents trying to cope with children home from school? As grandparents, I think we worry about both. We worry about our grandchildren, but we also worry about our children because this is an unprecedented event and many of them are really overwhelmed with working from home and having children at home. Um, grandparenting today is much different than it was before. Uh, Boomers, baby boomers have really taken it on. They travel with their grandchildren. They do a lot of uh, go to the zoo, go to the museum, uh, have them come and visit, cook together, lots of things. And all of a sudden with Corona uh, virus, this hasn't been able to happen. Uh, grandparents have been some of the uh, group that's most likely and most at risk. So they've had to stay home and 
are losing that connection. And they also feel like they really want to help their children while they're staying at home. So we're going to look at a couple of things. First part we're going to look at is really how to stay connected because we think that's important. And next we'll look at how can you actually really help them with their um, homework, with their schoolwork. Um, how to stay connected. Uh, I think one of the big things is, is that you have to start small. Um, you can start with calling, video chatting, or Zooming, um, and begin teaching things that interest you or interest them. So young children, you can work on the alphabet. Uh, look at history. If you are a history buff and there's things that you really like, share that with your grandchildren. Um, you can do dance moves. You can have dance parties together with a video chat or a Zoom meeting. Another piece that you can do is have a fun name. Uh, mine's called Granny Academy. You could do Nana Academy or Grandpa Games, but it really makes it fun. For instance, I just called my grandson. It's his birthday, and he didn't want to even talk to me. He didn't have anything to say. He's in, he's in 4K. He had nothing to say. As soon as I said, Cohen, this is Granny Academy. Let's talk about your letter of the week. Well, as soon as we got engaged into something, he all of a sudden had all kinds of things to say. And we had a really nice conversation. But I had to converse with him at his level, not about what are you doing today, because they don't have anything to say. Um, and you want to help give structure to that new unstructure with no school. Uh, kids still need structure in their life, and you can be part of that with scheduling things. For instance, you may say that you're calling for a video chat every day at one. Well, that's something for the children to look forward to, but it's also something for parents to look forward to because they know that you're going to occupy their children for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is that you agree upon. And they can make meetings at that time. They can make conference calls at that time. They can do things that they really have to do. Uh, teach them something new. Uh, tell stories about your past. Um, mine, my four and five-year-old, I have two grandchildren that are four and five, were struggling with how to write a journal entry. And I started telling them about how there used to only be three channels on TV. They were just enthralled with that. They couldn't imagine three channels on TV only. My other, um, I have middle school grandchildren also, a different family. Uh, they have to write a journal entry every day. They call me almost every day and ask about some ideas for their journaling because they're at home. They're not going anywhere. They don't even go to the store. They have nothing to write about and to write a journal entry every single day. So they call and I tell them about things from my past. I remind them about trips we've been on. I can come up with ideas for them until they hit on one and they go, oh, I can write about that. Thanks. And they hang up. But at least I could help with that. Um, bake together, cook together. That's a really fun thing to do. Uh, you can do it over Zoom. You can do it on a video chat. You can even do it with call them up and talk them through it. Set the phone down next to them and talk through what they want to do. Teach them a craft. Uh, kids love to craft. Uh, teach them how to knit. Teach them how to crochet. Um, teach them how to wash your car. Uh, this is one that I had a friend actually do. It was a nice day out. She took her computer out, set it down, and actually talked her kids through washing their car. And they washed their mother's car, and that was their Mother's Day gift. I mean, what a great thing to do. Most kids don't have any idea how to wash a car. Uh, teach them how to plant a garden. Um, it can start with seeds. It can start with plants. You can show them how to work up the dirt. You can have them do a terrarium. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of skills and a lot of things that we know how to do that would be exciting for kids and they would really enjoy it. I don't know how many of you have done it, but I've done it. And you call them up on the phone and they have absolutely nothing to say. They, you can't get a word out of them. These kind of things make it fun and you'll both have a better connection. Read to your grandchildren. This is really an important thing and something that with parents working from home right now has really been cut back. 
parents don't have time to just sit and leisurely read with their kids. They're so busy trying to get their own work done, the work around the house, and oversee homework that reading has just become a side thing. Uh, you can record yourself reading books and send them as videos and let the kids watch them when they have time. You can video chat at night for bedtime and read them stories. Another thing, especially with middle schoolers and teens, read books to each other one chapter at a time. Really nice thing to engage in. Plus, you can go back to the journaling piece. You can help them journal about what you're reading and really work at that. Almost all middle school and high school kids are required to journal every day right now. Not going to English class, that's one of the things they're having them do at home. It's hard for them to come up with things to write about. Email daily photos. I've also tried this one a couple of times. It's kind of fun. You take a photo of what you're doing at all aspects of the day and at the end of the day, you put them in an email and you just jot or a text, you could do either, and just jot little notes about what you were doing on each of it and send it to the grandchild. Ask them to send you one back the next day that you want them to keep, keep a journal of what they did all day. It's a really good way to share your days without actually being there. Plus, it's a lot of fun. You can play games online together. Uh, words with friends, classic board games. If you research it, you'll see there's all kinds of classic board games that come up that you can play virtually with each other. Uno can be played on Facebook. Web websites such as Tabletopia have games of virtual chess and checkers kids can play with grandparents and they're free to use. All of these are some awesome ways to keep that connection going and actually do something that engages both the grandparent and the student. Ramp up phone calls with a game of 20 questions. I tried this out before I put it in. It was really fun. Find an object, and it doesn't matter which one starts, grandchild or grandparent. Uh, find an object, write it down. Traditional game of 20 questions. Ask 20 questions and see if they can guess what the object is. Young children, I would say seven and younger, you probably want to do a category. Um, tell them it's an animal or it's something you use in the kitchen. So it narrows their guesses. Otherwise, they'll be guessing all over the place. But even children as young as three or four can very easily do this. Discuss art. Take pictures of art and send it back and forth and discuss uh, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and then have grandchildren and grandparents make their own art based on it. What a fun thing to do. Or refinish furniture or paint outside, paint furniture. Um, older kids, uh, my granddaughter that's 12 loves to paint furniture. She's painted like six things out here at my cottage. Uh, but you can do it through video. Talk them through the steps, let them work on it. Or you can actually do real art or crafts. But a great thing to do that you can do back and forth. Fill jars with random items. The jar I have there is jelly beans. You could do marshmallows, you could do coins, you can do beads. Um, guess how many. Uh, it goes both ways to guess how many. Uh, keep score for a week and see who did the best. Uh, send photos back and forth of it. Older kids have a great time with this because they try to decide what would be the hardest thing to guess because they want to win. So they you do really tricky things in their jars. Um, a really fun thing to do and it's enjoyable for both again and you're still keeping that connection. Write a story together. Write one line or a paragraph and email it back and forth. It's a great way to keep them engaged. It's one of the things you do in a classroom. I taught fifth grade for a number of years. We did this a lot when we were looking for to fill 10 minutes. We would have everybody take out a sheet of paper, write one line, pass it to the person in back of them, and they'd write the next line. You come up with some really crazy, really fun stories. Well, there's not any reason that you cannot do this with your grandchildren. If there's more than one grandchildren in the house, 
Have everybody write one line, keep sending it back and forth. When you're finished, one person reads the story in its entirety and everybody else gets to listen. Have a video tea party for younger children. This is an awesome thing to do. You just need to set up some tea sets, have child have their best stuffed animals around and everybody dresses in their best, including the grandparents. And you have a virtual tea party. It could be a great time. Again, these are kind of things that you do when you're there. So why not try to do them virtually also? We've talked about things for connections. I really think that's the most important piece of all of this. However, your children also may need you to help grandchildren with schoolwork. And it's a little bit tricky if you're trying to do it virtually, but it's not impossible. It is something that you can do. Uh, most kids aren't self-regulated enough to work for a sustained period of time without constant supervision. This is what's making this so difficult for the parents. They have to be doing their own work while supervising children. My middle school age grandchildren have been really good about it. They might ask for directions again once in a while or ask for an idea, but they pretty much are self-regulated. They can get it done. My four-year-old and five-year-old, not a chance. They need direct instruction and they need somebody to be there. Parents can't be there all the time. So for especially for younger grandchildren, it is helpful if you can pick up the slack for even at 30 minutes a day is really helpful. Um, there's three categories of learning at, that's happening right now, uh, virtual learning with no technology. And some schools are doing this completely, no technology at home. They pick up packets of work, take it home and drop it back off at the school. Uh, my grandchildren actually are, the young ones are doing a combination of this. They pick up the packet but then the online directions and the videos that go with it are all there. But because they're young, they give a lot of materials and handouts. For instance, uh, we had to make a spider plate last week and the legs were on the construction paper and you had to cut them out and glue them on. Well, so you picked up the packet with the paper and the video helped you with how to do it. Uh, virtual teaching synchronous. This is actually gonna be the hardest part as an outsider or grandparent not in the home to help with because this is real time the child is real time on video on the computer with their teacher and their classmates well obviously you're not going to be in there so it's not as easy for a grandparent to step in and help with this asynchronous however you will be able to help with it's not real time in for instance google classroom canvas seesaw my younger children are using seesaw my older grandchildren are using google classroom i've been able to help them with both not even being there i think this is just a cute video that shows we've always been teachers One of the best parts about that video is you didn't see them doing schoolwork. They were doing things that kept children engaged and they were all learning. And I think that's something that we have to remember. And as grandparents, we have to remember to reinforce that with our children. You have to give them a pass. This is not normal times. They can't be expected to do everything in their job, everything in their house, and yet still keep their children at the same point that teachers would have had them at. Keep them healthy, 
keep them emotionally healthy and the teachers will catch them up in the fall. Let's just give everybody a pass here a little bit and let's keep the connections and the emotional piece. That's what's important. Um, I have up here younger students, 4K to about second grade. They need the most help. And I think that you could, as a grandparent, be the most helpful here. I, I've got some ways to actually do that. This is no technology. Um, this is actually a pretty easy way for you to help as a grandparent. Uh, have pictures sent of their work to you. Uh, you can then go on video chat with them and talk them through the directions or have them uh, show you as they're working. They also can com send completed work to grandparents just to check over. Really much easier to send the picture of it to a grandparent than to try to have uh, parents have to stop their work all the time to be constantly double checking and saying, is this right or is that right? And so after work is done, you can meet by phone or video and just talk through what, what happened. Uh, it can be a very successful way to help both the parent and the grandparent and the child. Um, virtual teaching synchronous, again, kind of difficult because you can't get in on that conference. And so you have to then rely on that student being able to tell you what happened and what they need help with. Uh, younger students especially, it's just not gonna work. But you can uh, follow up, like you can check in with students if they have problems, uh, give additional directions, do with check-in. You can check again homework before submission to the teacher that saves a step for parents. They don't have to be reviewing all that homework before it goes in. Asynchronous, not real time. You can really be helpful here. Um, I would ask if, for young children, I would ask for the login. My grandchildren are on Seesaw. I have the login to Seesaw for both of them. And then what happens is I can actually go in at the same time they go in and I can do exactly what I'm doing with you right now. I set up a Zoom meeting and I Zoom with them and I share my screen. So if a video is the teacher reading a poem and they're supposed to learn that poem, I share that video, shut it off. Then I can talk to the child and have them do it. And then they know how to click the record button on their computer and they record themselves doing it for their homework and submit it. It works out really well. Older kids, it's easy for them to do what we're doing right now, but they know how to share their screen. They can share their screen if they're working on something and they're stuck. Um, they can email homework to you to have it checked uh, they can send, actually take a picture of the assignment, send it to you. You can video chat with them about how to complete it, ideas that you have for it, if they need help. Um, you can do flashcards with younger kids. Really important thing. Uh, you can do sight words. You can do math problems. You can do pieces of history with older kids. You can do anything at all that engages them and make them start talking about what they're doing. And as I've brought up a couple of times, the journaling thing is huge. This, my four grandchildren, all at a different age, this has been the hardest piece for them to complete. They don't have anything to write about. So you really can help them not only do things with them that they have something to write about, but tell them things, reinforce things that they've done before, help them come up with ideas on what they should be doing. I went through that really fast. Hopefully you got a lot of good ideas on how you can connect with your own grandchildren. Uh, what are your questions at this time? Um, I don't necessarily have a question, but I, I did get like about 10 more ideas. So that was great, Deb. Thank you. Oh, good. Good. Go ahead, Mike. I thought it was excellent as well. And um, points uh, are good ideas that we can incorporate 
yeah. your communications back and forth. But I did have a question and whether it's an electronic yeah, learning whether platform it's electronic or what, learning. but I didn't know what Canvas or Schoology, Schoology, Schoology uh -huh. is. Mm -hmm. What are those? And Blue Jeans, could you interpret what those are actually? If they are learning platforms or just websites you can access resources or? Do you wanna take it? Sure, I can. Um, Schoology is a learning platform that the school district would have. So, right. or would not, it, it depends on, you know, the, all the different schools have different learning platforms that they use. So Schoology is one, Seesaw some teachers are using as well, Google Classroom, um, Canvas, there's lots of different options. So that would be dictated by the school and the teacher. Okay. And then Blue Jeans is similar to Zoom. Some schools are using that as well. Okay, that's what I assume, but thank you. And the, the platform is really determined by the school. So if you were trying to help your grandchild, you would have to ask them what platform they're using. They would know. They'll know. Yeah, they're using Seesaw and Khan Academy. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Khan Academy is for math. Seesaw is very easy to navigate and I would ask for the login mm -hmm. for your child. They each have their own login. So you mm -hmm. can log in directly and then you could really help them with their, their work that they're doing on Seesaw. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And that comes from the teacher or like their computer tech person of the school? No, the teacher will have, um, Every student, if they're on Seesaw, like my two grandchildren that are on Seesaw, they each have their own login. It's specific to them. And so you can't see anybody else's stuff. You can't see. So that's why I'm saying it's very secure to get your grandson's login. And then he and you can two can be logged in at once on the same account. So it's kind of nice because like with Cohen, I have Cohen log in and then I log in at my house and I go into a Zoom meeting and I share my screen. And he goes on Zoom. He doesn't even go. He doesn't have to be in Seesaw, but I like him in Seesaw because I like him to submit the assignment then. So, but you can easily do that virtually. It's a it's a really easy platform to work in together. So you're accessing them under his account, not your own account. Right. You access yeah. under his because you want to go in because in Seesaw, what the teachers do, at least in both of instances of my two grandchildren, they do a lot of videos of themselves reading a book or telling about a science experiment or they videotape themselves and then the child is asked to replicate it. Well, they need somebody right there. Like even if they're reading a story, they will stop the story in the middle and say, uh, discuss why you think Joey did that, just like they would be doing in their classroom. Well, if there's mm -hmm. not an adult sitting there, <laughs> they can't stop it and discuss it with someone. So that's where I come in on the Zoom. I stop the story because I'm showing it on my screen and then Cohen and I discuss it and then I put it back up again. Okay, good. So is this the last of your series of, of sessions you're providing? No, we have two more. Two more. Okay. There's one. Yeah, tomorrow two more. is specific to special education and trying mm -hmm. to fulfill the individual education plan. And Thursday is about um, how to how to structure the day and why does learning look look different now than it did when they were in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's great that uh, you put this uh, learning opportunity out and available for parents and grandparents and caregivers. And um, who knows, might even need to have it available on hand to start at the beginning of this fall if things don't change. <laughs> That's what we were thinking. <laughs> yeah, exactly there you go. We mm-hmm. I hope for the children's sake, they get to go back to school. It's really been hard on kids, but oh. I totally understand if it's not safe and they can't. Right. True. Exactly. 
Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> All 